Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on our comprehensive problem. We are now going to make the financial statements including the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of owner's equity. We will be doing so using the adjusted trial balance here. So what we have done up until this point is that we have done the journal entries. We've recorded the journal entries for the month of May. We've recorded those to the general ledger over here. The general ledger was then used to create the trial balance of this being the unadjusted trial balance. We then took those unadjusted trial balances. We did our adjusting entries on this tab. So as of the end of the time period, we adjusted those accounts that need adjustments for the adjusting process to be on an accrual basis from the unadjusted trial balance to the adjusted trial balance. Now we're gonna take this adjusted trial balance and create financial statements from it. We will then take that unadjusted trial balance and we will make financial statements from it. So we are now on the financial statement tab. We have our unadjusted trial balance here. We can see that these numbers are coming from the adjusted trial balance up here in the formula bar. So we're just using these same numbers and we're gonna make the financial statements from that adjusted trial balance. Now the first thing we're gonna to wanna to note is that all we are doing is taking the form of balance from one form and basically putting it into another form. We wanna realize that since it is in balance in this form that it must work if we put it in correctly in the other form. We know that it has to work, so therefore when we uh, approach this, we're gonna approach it from the idea that it has to work and therefore if, it, if it's not in balance, then we just gotta figure out what we went, did wrong. It's not that the thing doesn't work. So. For example, we know that we are in balance over here because the debits minus the credits equal zero. That's how we know we are in the balance. That's how the double entry accounting system is being represented in the trial balance. We see it represented up here the way we're gonna represent it, it, it on the financial statements in that assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. That is the balance sheet. We can see that we are in balance here and here. The assets are of course the green accounts, liabilities orange, and equity is all the blue. And so what we're going to do is put this information in the form of this formula in a more, of course, detailed area in the form of financial statements. I'm actually going to start off with the balance sheet because the balance sheet to me is really everything. And so I want to see the accounting equation first and then drill down more on the equity section, which will deal with this account here. You'll see that we already have some totals here. The ending numbers that we're going to come up to are uh, total assets and total liabilities and equity these two numbers will have to be the same. First thing I want to do is point out that the title of the balance sheet will go here and we're just going to put May 31st in this case. I'm just going to put the year being 20x1 and the point there being that there's only one date as of the balance sheet because we're as of a point in time. So even though we've been working for the month May 1st through May 31st, uh, when we're looking at the end here in terms of the balance sheet, we only care about the end date because there is no time frame. That's where we are as of a point in time. That's what the balance sheet is. When we come down to the income statement, that will be different. We'll have a time range beginning to the end. So we have our assets, our liabilities, and our equity will be down here. We'll add the equity accounts down here. And so what we're going to do is put this information over here from the trial balance into the financial statements in a set format. First, I'm going to just start off with the assets and we'll just go down from there. So when we think about assets, first within the asset category, we usually break it out into current assets being our first asset class. And those are going to be assets that are more liquid, meaning they're more convertible to cash. And we're going to start off and they, they're usually in order on the trial balance in that fashion as well. So cash is a current asset, receivables is a current asset, supplies is a current asset, prepaid rent is a current asset, uh, prepaid insurance. Office equipment is not. So office equipment is going to be a longer lived asset is going to be larger pieces of equipment that will have a longer life. Note that we put current assets, we put a colon after it, that's going to mean that there's going to be a subcategory of current assets under this section. I'm going to copy from cash down to prepaid insurance, right click, I'm just going to copy that. Once again, you could type it in here, I'm going to copy and paste it. Also note that I've made the format of the financial statements kind of funny that I've kept with the colors here. Um, hoping that that's somewhat helpful. Uh, if you change the color scheme, that's fine as well. But uh, there's a black background so that the colors stand out more. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to paste it one, two, three. Again, if you paste the first one, it's going to change the color back for me. And, and again, there's, if you want to change it, that's fine. But if you want it to stay green for the assets and whatnot, then if you paste values, that will happen. 
Now, the other thing we usually do, and I'm gonna look at some formatting, you have to do the formatting uh, in this particular worksheet, but oftentimes we will have this indicated by an indentation as well. So instead of us going in here and double clicking, don't do this, and hitting the space bar to show kind of an indentation, we will then just highlight these cells and indicate the indentation if we so choose by going to the home tab alignments group and if you hit this increase indent it'll indent within the cell so now we're saying it's current assets these are all current assets shown by the indentation and then we're going to put the number of the current assets in the inner column here now these inner column although there's two of them does not mean debit and credit these are not debits and credits there are no debits and credits on the financial statements the whole point of the financial statements is that we're going to show them to people that don't need to know debits and credits. So this just means that we're going to group numbers on the inside and then we're going to sum them out on the outside. So the assets, we're going to group them on the inside. I'm going to do that with a formula. I'm going to say equals and I'm just going to go boom, there's the 34 and enter. I'm going to keep doing that. Equals, there's the 58. Could we type them in there? Yes, but again, formulas would be far useful because formulas will help you to see if there's an error equals the supplies, equals uh, the prepaid rent, equals the insurance. Now, if you're wondering, is there a formula? Could we have done that an easier way in Excel? Yes, you could have done that an easier way. We could delete this and we could highlight that first one and autofill or copy and paste because these formulas are uh, proportional or relational to each other. So if we put our cursor on this little bar here, we use what's called the autofill. So if you left click on that, and drag down, auto drives it down, and Dr. Phil does the calculation once you let go. And it, what it does is it assumes that we wanna bring that formula down. And of course we do, because that's typically what happens in a normal Excel worksheet. So that's the one major thing that's kind of weird in Excel that if once you get used to is extremely helpful. All right, so now we're gonna have the total current assets. We're gonna to say total current assets. Enter, I'm going to go off the cell and then I'm going to go back on it. I'm going to indent this one two times. So I'm going to go up to the home tab, alignment group, and we're going to increase indent one and two times. So we hit current assets indicated by colon, indented, then double indent on the total, and the total will go out to the outer column. So anytime we have, we only add things up in one or the other column. In this case, we're going to add up these numbers in the outer column. We're going to do that with our most used function. You have to know the sum function. It's going to be the sum function. It's going to be equals SUM. You could just double click on it down here to get the sum function like so. And then I usually just highlight it. It's better to point and click for me the cell range. So from here, highlight down to here. And then we could close it off. You don't have to. Control Shift to close it. That's going to be the sum function. So we're going to sum the range of in this case, I5 colon I9, range of I5 to I9. Now we hit enter and it sums that up for us. And of course, all we did if we had the calculator was 43250 plus 5800 plus 750 plus 1600 plus 1200 and that's 526. So that's the sum function, gotta know the sum function. You can also have it here. You can put this sum function up in your quick taskbar but uh, I almost prefer just typing it in there. I think that might actually just be the fastest way to go. We're gonna have another subcategory now because now, and we might wanna say that we found a home for these. So I could highlight these and say, okay, I'm gonna say I found a home for those. Once we find a home for all of these, then uh, we should be in balance if we did it correctly. All right, so the next category is going to be called property, plant, and equipment, colon, that's another category. And then within property, plant, and equipment, we're gonna have, oops, this one we haven't found a home for. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna un unfind a home for that. We need to find a home for the office equipment and the accumulated depreciation now. That's gonna be the second two assets, the next two assets, the only two left in the asset green area. So I'm gonna copy this one. Well, I'll just copy them both, highlight both of them, right click, copy, then we'll come over here, right click, and paste one, two, three. So we've got the office equipment and the accumulated depreciation. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna indent those by having those highlighted. We're gonna to go to the home tab. We're gonna to go to the alignment group. We're gonna increase the indentation. So we're saying this is another group of assets called property, plant, equipment, longer lived assets. And we have the office equipment, the accumulated depreciation. 
Now note that the accumulated depreciation is a negative number here, it's a credit. So uh, that what that means is it's really the credit half of these two accounts. So we're going to subcategorize those and, and this is going to be a decrease to the assets because of that. So over here we have to indicate that I'm going to indicate it with words, that's the way I usually do it. So in my financial statement would look like this, we're going to say less to indicate it's a subtraction problem and then I'm going to abbreviate accumulated depreciation just so it's um, fitting here. So there we have accumulated depreciation and then the numbers I'm going to say this equals the 14.5 and here I don't want to have that negative number even though it could be a negative representing the fact that it's a subtraction problem not a credit in this case but generally I represent it as a subtraction problem with the word less. So if it doesn't say less, then you add them up. If it says less, then you do a subtraction problem. Some financial statements will be slightly different. Some statements would assume that you know that. Some statements might put a negative in there. But uh, one way to uh, do that is to put the less in there when it is a subtraction problem. In order to take away the credit then in Excel, instead of selecting equals, I'm going to put negative and then point to the cell and enter. So now what it did is it took that cell and it flipped the sign. So another way to look at it, if I delete that and we just said equals this number and enter. And then I want to say, hmm, I want to get rid of that credit. I want to make that a positive number. Well, how can we make something a positive number? I could multiply it times negative one because anything times negative one will flip the sign. And then I'm going to represent it as a subtraction problem by saying this minus this. Now, of course, this formula minus negative one is kind of uh, long. We don't need to we don't need to do that in Excel. We could say, well, hmm, maybe I just get rid of this minus negative one. And since there's only one number, I want you to take what's in cell F11 and make it and flip the sign. So if I just put a negative, it'll flip the sign like so. So that flips the sign. And if you take that thought one step further, then if you, instead of hitting equals, if we select negative, then Excel still thinks we're doing a formula, but it's going to basically just think negative uh, equals negative. And then point to the cell, 660 negative will now be 660 positive. So we're going to have to flip the sign on all of these credit balances because we don't want credits over here on the financial statements. Okay, so then we're going to have the total. total property plant and equipment and I know it's taken over a little bit there but I'm going to do this uh, with a formula once again we're going to say the 14.5 minus so make sure you get the minus it's got to go the right way it's got to be minus this 660 and then we will come up with this 13840 which if I highlight these two 13840 that's correct we found a home for these two now I'm going to click on that and uh, highlight those. Now we have accounted for all assets. If I highlight all the green numbers here, it adds up to 66440. And now I'm going to see if that's the case over here in total assets. I'm going to go to the total assets. I'm going to add up just one column. We only add up one column on a, at a time. This being the outer column, being the total current assets plus the total property plant and equipment. I'm going to do this with the sum function, even though there's blank cells here like this equals SUM. And I'm just going to highlight the blank cells as well as these cells. I'm going to highlight all the way down and enter. So all we did of course was add those two numbers up. So we're just adding up the 52600 plus 13840 to 66440 and that is the same as if we highlighted these here. If it's not the same, most people mess up by not having this uh, going the correct way since it's a contra asset. Alright, so then we're going to go over here to the liabilities. Liabilities are in this orange area. And we have three of them. We've got accounts payable, we've got salaries payable, we've got unearned uh, fee. Now on liabilities, we usually have this convention again as well. We have the current liabilities. And these are gonna be liabilities that we're gonna have to pay within a year. Now in this case, they all happen to be current. So we're still gonna put current liabilities up here, but we're gonna do something a little bit weird. We're just gonna call them total liabilities in the subtotal because we have no other liabilities. If we have long-term liabilities, liabilities that last over a year, then we would have total current liabilities and then we would add up the long-term liabilities. So let me show you what this looks like if we have just current liabilities such as we do here. We're going to copy these. We're going to go over here to uh, K5, right click, paste it, one, two, three. 
So instead of pasting it this way, I'm going to paste it one, two, three. And then I'm going to indent those. So I'm on the cell. I'm going to go to the Home tab. I'm going to go to the 